you know, there's like a stage fright aspect where you're like, oh no, you're gonna like see how I do things and I just like hack things together and it's like a, a horrible like little and you're like, no man, like that's how it's gonna be. And the thought that like you can go deeper with how your computer works for you feels like it's about to be something that is a lot more accessible to a lot more people. And that a younger generation is gonna come in with the assumption that they should be able to like tweak and build software that's just for them. And the whole experience of computing is gonna be completely different. You being someone quite influential in the tech community, obviously known for creating the hashtag, yes. uh, the number one product hunter, which is, <laughs> man, that's impressive. I love it. <laughs> like how many products have you reviewed? That must be nuts. Uh, let me see. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I think yeah, you know that, right? It's over like 4,000. It's kind of oh, insane. Man. Here, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. That's mad. That's insane. I don't know what's wrong with me. You're also someone who's been using tech for a long time, and you've openly spoken about the fact that you have used Alfred for a long time. Mm. You helped us improve our comparison of Raycast versus Alfred, yep. but you also kind of spoke about the fact that you've moved on to Raycast. That's true. So the first thing I want to ask you is, why did you move over? Like, what's the main reason? And what would that comparison look like to you, like a fair comparison? I'm, I'm really glad that you've asked this question because, you know, on the one hand, I think Alfred um, and the team over there, like they deserve one, a lot of, you know, credit and also just, you know, they've been doggedly building the software for, uh, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, and, you know, as, as a two person team, I think they only recently expanded to three. Um, it's pretty impressive, you know, how, how much I use that software on a daily basis for years. The reason why I was excited about Raycast and why I switched were, there were, there were several things. As someone who mostly identifies as a designer, I have to bid for the time and attention of engineers for them to build the things that I need. And it got to the point where I was like writing scripts and kind of like using a lot of Alfred's tooling in their workflows to create these elaborate um, systems for like interacting with Twitter and interacting with all the different services that I used. But whenever I got stuck writing a script, um, you know, whether it was Apple script or Python or something else, um, it was just such a slow process for me to get help from the community. And furthermore, when I wanted to incorporate things like OAuth and authorization into my plugins, there was this just reaction from the community that said, no, like Alfred needs to be able to work offline and not with the internet. And, you know, we're basically like going to make this backwards compatible so that it works with Max from like, you know, 1994. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. I don't think Max existed in the same way back then. But regardless, Alfred just got to, I think, a point where it wasn't interested in the future. You know, the direction that Raycast was going in felt more promising and that as hard as it was, it was time to, uh, you know, part ways with my, my good friend, Alfred. What's one feature of Raycast that you love and you wish that everybody else knew about it as well? Probably the, and I feel like this is like so simple, but the summarization feature is the one that I, probably use the most now. I use this all the time, Command Shift S, and I will use it on like blog posts, on articles, uh, everything. Um, I find that it's like super helpful, super useful. And so um, this alone is kind of like even better than like ad blockers and things like that in the browser. Um, because obviously, you know, you see it and it's just exactly what you need to know. Um, yeah. So I, I, I actually use this constantly. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, AI commands in general, um, yep. I find myself using them more and more. I feel like yep. they, they're starting to become some sort of automation tool for me. By the way, for people watching, the way that Chris is doing this is using an AI command that basically reads the content of the focus tab in a browser. But for this to work, you need to install the Raycast browser extension, which is this companion app, if you will. And once you install that, then Raycast can communicate with the browser and get the data it needs. It's funny how you say like the thing is simple. I feel like most things that become mm. like amazing and people can't live without, they're usually simple. It just needed someone mm -hmm. to think about them, right? But yes. Like the hashtag is a great example of that. You know, like it could not be any simpler. It's a format that works anywhere. It's totally interoperable, but nobody thought about it until you did. I like to use the example of the hashtag when I do talk about things like launchers and like productivity apps, because the the core insight like of the hashtag was one kind of observing other people's behaviors and like where they were getting stuck and kind of like watching for those pain points. And in that case, it was how do you coordinate 
uh, and group conversations at that time on Twitter, you know, which was an SMS based service where you had 140 characters. And so you just didn't have a lot of space, you know, to add a lot of like metadata or other information. And so we, what we were doing in IRC at the time, you know, was we had these channels and they were prefixed with a pound symbol. And it was like, what if we just bring kind of like roughly the concept of like IRC channels into Twitter, but you can't always like prefix your messages with a channel name because you have so few characters. What if, if the word itself is part of the message and therefore the system will just be able to group those messages for you. And so that's kind of like where that came about. And so that idea of like watching and paving your own cow paths is exactly like how I try to, you know, build, you know, before it was like Alfred workflows and now it's like Raycast uh, extensions. And so that's why like, you know, I created like the threads um, extension because I wanted to serve my own need, you know, just like to be, you know, here, like search for keywords or hashtags. Um, right. And so, I, I remember when you were building this extension because you were sharing that on threads and yeah. I was like, hang on a second, but I thought Chris was a designer <laughs> and you came from a design background. <laughs> yes. So how did you build this? Um, actually, I built it with Claude. Um, Claude probably wrote most of the code and you know, I had an idea for like how I wanted it to work. And I took a look at some other um, extensions. In fact, I think that there's I know there's like a Farcaster extension, um, you know, and just kind of like took inspiration from what other people were doing and, you know, kind of, I think it's like create extension. I just started here, um, had the, the stub of the extension. Once I created that basic extension, then I just went in and uh, I was using Zed um, as my editor and um, was going back and forth. And this is before Cursor and these kind of like AI. Ah, right, I was going to say. Collaborators were available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of uh, quick links that basically mm. open oh, specific, specific folders, right? So I can open my downloads very easily. I can open the Dropbox, a specific Dropbox folder because it's also, you know, local file. I can open um, my pictures folder where I save the backup of my photos mm. that are not mm -hmm. in the photos app. So mm. for me, I'm like, where do I want to go and how do I get that really quickly? I create quick links. That's what they're for, right? Um, I think a lot of people thing the quick links are only for websites but they can be for anything on your computer so it used to be the case that raycast quick links kind of only could take one like query and i think it was a requirement it might have been a requirement and now i use quick links actually as a kind of bookmark like for affiliate links and things like that right so i'm like oh i want to invite my friend to like arc or something or or to raycast even in this case i have a bunch of like you know affiliate things um and the reason why these are useful is because I want to be able to like, you know, quickly send a link to someone, one, maybe to skip a, um, I don't know, like an invite list or something, or there's some economic benefit in it for me. And this just created an, like a way to create a quick link that doesn't have a query and it's super useful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, like your local bookmarks in a way, right? Yeah, it, it is. Um, funny enough, I don't really use a lot of bookmarks um, kind of ever. Um, but yes, I do yes. create a lot of quick links. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I'm the same. I never, you know what? I always wanted to, but I just could yeah. never do it. Let me ask you a little question here. And I, when people show me their Raycast, I start getting really curious about how or why people did stuff, right? And so I'm curious about why did you use quick links to create all of these links instead of snippets? Like how do you uh, differentiate between them in this case? Uh, I use a lot of snippets. I would say that the reason is because of speed. I find that snippets are a little bit more uh, heavyweight, maybe like just to like, you know, what, what I'll do is um, I'll sort of get to wherever the, the referral link is in um, like arc. Like if I go to arc, uh, let's see. It's funny. I didn't, I didn't even like use the arc extension. I just like, I kind of always go to arc. <laughs> So if I go to threads and then uh, you hit command L, there's the URL. And if I do, um, I launch uh, Raycast and I say create quick link, it automatically pulls the URL from the browser. And so oh. snippets doesn't do that. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So, now, I don't know if that's a function of the Raycast browser extension. It may be, but that's that's essentially how that works. So that, that's why I do it that way. Very cool. Perfect answer. And I learned something. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Even you can learn something about Raycast. Oh, man, you know what? I always learn something in these videos. That's why I love it. <laughs> it's true. It's great. What else do you find yourself using Raycast for? 
Uh, I do use Raycast to figure out where I'm going and how long it's going to take. So like I live in Oakland now. And so like, I'll just do, you know, uh, maps. And so I'm like looking for places to go. Um, and this will just open it in, in the browser and it'll like get me there quickly. I did some updates to this extension, which again, you know, props to open source. So you can choose like wherever you're coming from. Let's just say I'm coming from San Francisco. Let's say I'm in, I'm in, let's say blue bottle. Oh, there's a lot of blue bottles. Let's do that. I don't want to walk. I definitely don't want to walk. So let's drive. Um, so you can get all this stuff like set up. And then if you hit enter, then this should just show you the dire driving directions from like San Francisco to like Ashes and Diamonds, right? That's I very do this cool. all the time. I love how many kind of like steps that skips as well. I feel like that's kind of what's nice about it because like by using Raycast, first of all, you don't need to kind of like change whatever app you're on. Right. You can just open right. it up, go straight to that command. So you might even yep. have a hotkey for it. And then you just put where you want to go, right? And you, even the text, like if you want to go from home, current location or other places you define. I mean, so like it's 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 that kind of thing where, um, again, like was it maps? It's really bad that I don't know these off the top of my head. But like, yeah, just like imagine that you're in a meeting and, you know, they're physically present, you know, in some office in like Palo Alto. And you've got to get to like the city to get home for like, uh, you know, a workshop or a meetup or something. You know, you kind of don't want to have to like, oh, where's what's my address? Like what, you know, what's going on? So this handles all of that for you. And it just, it streamlined the whole thing. You can imagine that someday you're just able to like ask the computer, you know, Siri or something like, you know, hey, how long is it gonna take me to get to like blah, blah, blah. And maybe it'll show you. But the fact that you can like quickly say, you know, by which route I find very helpful. And then you can like, you know, choose it and set it. And you're closer to the destination, not like your physical destination, but like what you're trying to actually understand sooner than if you first sort of like go to maps.google.com and you have to like take the address and all those things. So it just, it streamlines so much. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And uh, when you say that sometimes you can't remember these commands off the top of your head, is it because it's like, it's a muscle memory thing? Like it takes a while to remember or is it because you're not using hotkeys? Like how, how does it work in your mind? I use a set of hotkeys for a certain set of things. And there are other things that I, I think we've also had this conversation within the Raycast ecosystem about synonyms and the ability to have multiple hotkeys or not hotkeys, but keywords, right? So I like maps apparently is, uh, I use the keyword for Apple maps, but in the Google maps extension, like there are several, and obviously there's a local development version. So that's why you're seeing duplicate, but you can see that there are several different um, commands. And so having one hotkey doesn't make sense because each of these actually does something slightly different. Mm, and so sense. I use them differently. And so I'd prefer to have like the choices, even if there's a little bit of like a cognitive bump in order to get to where I'm trying to go. Got it. And what you're saying is that sometimes if you want to search for a specific command, let's say it says like search Google Maps. If you forget that it's search and you go browse Google Maps, then that's not going right. to show up. So that's what right. you mean by synonym. There are several different types of things that I would want to uh, show up that are options, right? So another one would be like places, but it doesn't show up at all. Like I think of like a place that I want to go and that's the thing that I start with, but obviously Raycast doesn't know that. And I can't use it as like a keyword hint to be like, okay, I want my Google maps extensions to show up. I mean, I can go to, you know, my maps extension uh, and I can like edit, what is it? Manage, manage extension. Oh, these are all my local development things. Yeah, yeah, I think you want to go configure extension. So I, you, know, you don't see the local you. ones. Yeah. Yes, all right. Right, and so from here I can add aliases but I can exactly. only add maps once, right? Like that's it. Yeah, no. it's already it's already used. So it's already that's nice. that's what I'm saying. Like that's where it would be nice to be able to. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Be able to reuse it. What other workflows do you do? Change case. That's that's one that I use actually all the time. So oftentimes people will submit things to me to launch on Product Hunt, and they'll have weird. Uh, Product Hunt has its own style guide for like how to. Um, capitalize things. Most things needs to be in sentence case. Um, and so they'll have like taglines or descriptions that are in like title case and that doesn't work. So I'm constantly kind of like going in here and like making these changes. Oh, very cool. You know, it's, it's also a good example where I had some feedback because there was a, it, like the, the change case thing has or, or had several different variants 
um, you know, like it has like kebab case and like, you know, uh, Pascal case. And I didn't really know what these were. And they were also somewhat redundant. So you can see like there's this section where it says like all cases, whereas like, you know, these are sort of like pinned and, and recent. Um, and so there was a, essentially a need to collapse these redundant cases. And so I reached out to the, the original developer and he was like, I want this to be the best change case extension on the internet. And I was like, great. <laughs> I was like, here's how to improve it. He's like, cool. And, and then we fixed it. That's the beauty so. of open source. I know I, that's so I'm just saying, like, I guess the, the point there is for anybody that is experiencing or encountering an extension and running up either against a limitation or um, just you know, some behavior that is weird or confusing, you know, you can go into the extension and I think it's, let's see, you can like, uh, maybe I have to do it from here. Feedback uh, request feature. Yeah. yeah. And so what this will do is this will just open up a, a browser window to the extension feature request page with the extension name already filled out. Um, and it'll link to the original source for the extension. So I have a bunch of feature requests that I've put in. Um, and it's just like, it feels to me like this is the way to kind of like keep evolving these things. Um, amazing. Like as a, you know, as I Very said. nice. All right, Chris, man, that was amazing. Um, I was really looking forward to this episode and you definitely did not disappoint it was a pleasure oh. to finally kind of yeah. meet you in real life for the first time yeah. as well definitely. and thanks so much for coming on man i appreciate it uh when are you guys going to be in san francisco or the bay area i don't know but okay. i would love to go there soon great